Hello everyone and welcome back to Jesse Heck Creative. This time we're going over a Spider-Man wave, the Demo Goblin Build-A-Figure wave from worst to best with a few customs here and there. Let's get to it. So in last place is the Velocity Suit Spider-Man and I think he's just alright. He's your normal kind of Spider-Man figure, pretty good articulation, doesn't really have too much going on with him. Uh, it's just that he's just kind of plain as far as Spider-Man go. Doesn't come with any other, other hands or stuff or any extra accessories like that. But it's just kind of your run-of-the-mill Spider-Man figure. He doesn't even have a calf swivel. It's kind of, you know, just sort of boring and kind of samey. Uh, I do like the deco on him. The eyes are kind of cool. It has a light-up looking effect, like it's all lit up. But other than that, it just kind of um, an okay Spider-Man, I guess. He comes with this web effect. You can actually put it over characters as if Spider-Man has webbed somebody up. It actually looks like a cool kind of cape here. In a way, this figure doesn't really merit the full-on purchase. The Mark III spider armor has the same kind of problem, yet he looks way cooler. I just find that, you know, this guy just has a lot more going for him as far as uh, just looks in general. The black works really well, and the uh, blue looks really nice. I wish there was a little more blue on the figure. It is just pretty cool how this guy looks. It's kind of all he's got going for him though. Gotta say though, he just looks better and more sort of armored up. I actually have a bunch of these guys to make sort of a spider army. And, you know, it, it looks cool. It's kind of your like run of the mill kind of mech suit. I like how with the eyes look, they look kind of sort of evil. And again, mainly I got this guy for the Build-A-Figure piece and the effect piece here. It goes over the head, kind of like a uh, webbing trap, like a Spider-Man web somebody up. Uh, there's a certain, like, top and a bottom to it, but it just sort of goes over the face like this. The figure's good. It looks really cool. It just isn't really one of the best Spider-Man, and it's sad to put Spider-Man figures at the bottom of the whole food chain as far as this wave goes. I'm not sure if this even counts as a Spider-Man figure or not, kind of, since it's sort of Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus, and Hydra kind of rolled into one. Uh, I like this figure a little more, but it's really hard to sort of figure out where all of these peg into. There's no diagram, there's no nothing. You just have to sort of wing it with the figure. But the articulation is vastly improved insofar as in this wave when it comes to like the sort of Spider-Man kind of thing. It just looks way better. He has little like sort of movable gauntlets on his wrist. The paint deco looks really nice, and it's a brand new body actually. I'm really surprised I did this. Uh, there's no crunch. Yet, there's a twist over here, and the uh, sort of uh, sort of swivel up here is great. Uh, the articulation's way more improved on this guy, and I'm really glad they did this. But again, having the, uh, just the tentacles, just not really having a place to put them. You can also take the backpack off if you want. But not really having a place to put the tentacles, uh, it just sort of like... Wherever you want to put them, you can put them, which is half the fun, but it's also half the challenge. Having them all face the same direction is kind of difficult, and it just doesn't really make much sense as to where you put them. I mean, it's trial and error, and it takes a while to do, but once you do it, it looks pretty cool. But I like I like the tentacles. This, this one right here in the back, this smaller squiggly one, doesn't really want to face forward on any shots that I would try to take, at least, to this guy. But I think he's really cool, and I got him to finish my sort of ultimate Sinister Six. And he's a worthy purchase. I think he's cool. The tentacles are okay. The body sculpt is great. The paint deco is really nice. But, I mean, get him if you want to add to your Dr. Octopus collection. So insofar as figures that, are, that I never even knew existed, White Rabbit kind of takes the cake here. She really just... I, she came out of nowhere. I don't even know who she is, yet she is a pretty cool figure. Uh, I like the kind of rabbit motif she's got going on. She has a brand new bow tie, brand new head sculpt with the ears. is pretty funny. Uh, I just feel like she's a lot of reuse, though. That's my big issue with her. Uh, she doesn't really sort of, you know, advance anything in sort of the Marvel Legends way. And she can barely move the uh, torso of the figure. The leg articulation is great. Uh, and then she actually uses a lot of reused parts. And I find it kind of cool that she uses these pieces from the M'Baku Build-A-Figure that came out last year or so. Uh, but I just find this, you know, to be a pretty okay figure. She has this uh, nice uh, umbrella with a little gun attachment. You can actually take that off and, you know, put it back on at will if you want to be a regular umbrella or anything. The main reason I got her is to actually do a Gwen Stacy custom figure 
and I find this to be really cool. Uh, it's the Jessica Jones body from the Comic-Con train set. We also got the jacket, we got a Claire Temple bag, Star-Lord headphones, and Emma Frost head. I kind of want to give her Storm heels, but this will do for now. And also we have the Claire Temple gloves. I think this is actually a really cool figure and a custom. Yeah, we'll be getting Gwen Stacy an actual one probably down the line, but for now this really works and I really like how it looks. There's a little problem with the head kind of turning sometimes not too well because I feel like the ball peg is too tight, but it has similar articulation and it actually works out really well as a Gwen Stacy for me. Back to White Rabbit. She's a good figure. A lot of reuse on their part. I like the watch. I like the bow. The sort of the look looks really nice, and this is really cool too, although I hear it's actually kind of brittle when you take it out of the packaging, so just be careful on that. Vulture was going to be number one, but I found that he just has the sort of reused body, and these back wings fall off pretty easily sometimes when you're posing him. I find that it's just a uh, good figure. It completes the Sinister Six for me, the original one, which is good. Taking these wings off is kind of easy. They sort of peg in. Uh, it's a shame that the back ones fall off a lot. But something that's cool about him is actually there is a variant of him where the pegs for the wings are on the shoulder the shoulder portion instead of the bicep portion. And that's interesting to me how they, you know, have variants of that. But this one's way better. It actually pegs in way better. It looks way nicer. Uh, Vulture has good articulation. Uh, I find him to be, he's on your sort of what usually used to be the Pizza Spider-Man body mold. But that has since been... Uh, sort of used way too much in my opinion and we need to come up with a different thinner body mold I think. Uh, he has this nice little uh, sort of tuft in his neck like an actual vulture. I used to really really be into vultures when I was younger and this guy actually really looks like a vulture so uh, other than that he just gangly lanky old man. I love his old man hands how creepy and crinkly they look. His face looks really nice too. He has liver spots here and there his articulation is something we've seen before too many times, though. That being said, he looks nice. He comes with this head and an alternate head that I'll show in just a, se a second. But basically this head, which is the Adrian Toomes head, and then we have another head. This comes from Blackie Drago, who I have no clue who that is either. Moving this figure around is kind of pretty okay, but again, those fall off very easily. And while I do like the figure a lot, I just find that, yeah, the, the wings just break it for me. The faces look really cool though. It's just a fun figure and completes for your Sinister Six. So not even knowing who Shang-Chi is insofar as knowing each figure in this wave, or at least liking them, this guy's actually a real surprise to me. He's number one. I never even knew who Shang-Chi was. He's apparently some kind of martial artist on the level of Iron Fist, yet he looks way cooler kind of to me. Uh, he's not even wearing a shirt. He has nipples. It's really bizarre insofar as Marvel Legends goes. Uh, this guy just looks really cool. He has these nice pants, this nice belt that you can ride up a little bit. But the thing that I mean, that you probably know endears me the most to him is the accessories. And I really like how many things this guy comes with. Let's go over them. Okay, he's got these two... Who can't even <laughs> make the thing with my hand. I got it! That kind of thing. He's got these hands, scary claw hands, and these are actually good for a multitude of other figures. Honestly, if you want, like, Marvel Legends hands, this guy is the guy to go to. He has fists, which I'm really glad about. Ready to punch someone in the face. Just a cuss. Kind of Bruce Lee looking fella. Holding hands for the nunchucks. And what's really cool is that you could put these nunchucks in his hands, but just watch out because the paint might rub on them. It takes a little bit of effort to get in, but once you got that in, it's pretty solid. It's got a nice dragon design on it. Looks pretty cool. And then we also got another nunchuck that bends in the middle. I like this nunchuck design. It's pretty cool. You can have him hold it like this, or you can have him hold it like this. Where he sort of, you know, does that thing where he tucks it underneath his elbow. Like I've seen most people with nunchucks do. But the pose of on this guy is really nice. Insofar as things that you want to pose him with, he comes with also karate chop hands that are pretty cool. There's an Iron Fist figure that came out a bunch of years ago that had the same kind of hands. Having all these hands together in one figure in a modern sort of like sculpt and modern paint job. Because they aren't shiny, they're kind of flat and matte. It's awesome. I'm really happy about this guy. He's a great figure and worthy of any collection. So last but not least, we come to Demo Goblin, and I think this guy is a star amongst the little Build-A-Figure community, as in the smaller Build-A-Figures that we're used to, at least. Rocket Raccoon was small, Okoye was small, and Hitmonkey was small, and all these smaller scale Build-A-Figures, at least in my opinion, don't really hold a candle to this guy. His glider, let's go on that. He has a three different options, smaller, larger, 
really tall height of the glider. And he looks great in all three. There's a ball joints over here and then a ball joint over here. And you just peg that in really easy peasy and it works out quite well. There may be a little bend as you're adjusting it, but it's meant to be flexible. It's meant to carry weight. And I really love the look of this glider. Uh, it looks really nice. There's got some more good paint on this. I love the red. I love the yellow. How it fades into orange a little bit in the middle. And we all know how I like orange. This is really nice. But also, they should have given it to Red Goblin over here, who looks fantastic. And I just think they should have packed it in with this glider. They should have given him a glider. They should have probably given him a little fire or something. Maybe a pump another pumpkin bomb or something. Something they should have given this guy. You either give it a glider and a pumpkin bomb. Just one of each. Come on, Hasbro. Uh, you gotta give him both. Make it a deluxe figure or something. Red Goblin will go over him later on, but I just want to show him with this glider. So if you're a big Marvel Legends fan like me, you probably know the articulation of this guy. The only thing I gotta mention, mostly, this cape kind of flares out a lot, as if he's flying, which works on the glider, but not when he's off the glider. Uh, the arms are kind of... won't go up that, that far and come out a lot, as you've just seen here. Uh, I mean, this guy probably couldn't have been a build -a figure He should have been a deluxe figure, maybe. But I really do like his look and all the accessories and little knickknacks they've given him. Uh, like this belt and the straps and just all the look of that looks really cool. I uh, like the tatters in the cape, how the cape, like the paint. The color scheme's really nice. It's classic uh, blue and red. Uh, I just kind of like the articulation of this guy. He can't really stand too well off the glider. Uh, and his head is kind of immobile sometimes. But other than that, he looks really good. And I wish he came with some kind of pumpkin bomb thing. It's kind of a shame they didn't pack him in with one. I've seen plenty of people online use these power effects from Captain Marvel, and they work wonders on Demo Goblin. Here he is on the glider. It's a shame he didn't come with them, but I'm glad I can at least use these for him now. So at the end of the day, it's a pretty alright wave. Uh, you got some classic characters, you got a bunch of modern characters, and a Build-A-Figure that is kind of tops insofar as the other ones in his category. A few customs here and there that I've made that helps boost up the collection. It isn't amazing, it isn't like spectacular, it's good. So Shang-Chi is really nice. He has great articulation, great sculpt. I love the deco on the pants. The feet are cool too. You know, you rarely see barefooted characters in Marvel, and this guy really pulls that off. He has a really awesome twisted headband, and I love the accessories it comes with. It comes with a whole bunch of hands, some nunchuck, he looks great. Vulture finally completes our Sinister Six. He's spindly, lanky, old like he should be. I love this guy. He's got little tufts of fur on his neck. I also like the other head, too. The Blackie Drago one with the helmet. The helmet has a sleek look and has little grooves in it. It's really cool. One complaint I do have, though, is that the wings keep falling out, and I wish they were pegged in better. But until then, this is a great vulture figure for now. White Rabbit is really nice. She has a lot of reuse, yet the reuse is applied in a way that makes her look unique. The new parts actually really help. The torso, the head, the bow, and the gun-toting umbrella thing she's got going looks really nice. Superior Octopus, while having weird wonky tentacles, has a body sculpt that I hope gets reused so much. It really is a treasure to get a new body sculpt. This sculpt is going to be wonders for the future. The two Spider-Men, sadly, are not the best. Both Spider-Men are letdowns to me. I think that the paint is great, the articulation is just okay, and we need way more hands for them. Spider-Man, by now, should have six hands. Three right, three left. The webbing effects are the best part of them, sadly, and it's a shame because these could have been really great with more articulation. Demo Goblin is fantastic, though. A crazy look on his face, and the glider's beautiful, and just the way he looks, and how menacing he is, and even though like he's like 90% reuse, he's still really awesome to me. And not to mention, his glider looks really Really cool on Red Goblin as well. The other vulture head put on this body looks really great, and the Gwen I made is one of my favorite customs that I've done. It's a pretty cool thing to make and adds creativity making these figures. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned!